It's just gonna. So when Warren comes, that means they're out of division. Yeah, out of division. So you should get. Yeah, you should be sort of. They might have to leave and then come back. Like we'll um, we'll work that out once we get to it.
Hello. Um, sorry, just a small announcement before we actually begin the formal proceedings. Uh, apparently, the House of Representatives, there is uh, divisions going on, and so we are waiting on some members from the uh, representative uh, from the House of Representatives. So please, uh, meanwhile, uh, partake in the food and the drinks, and uh, we will start as soon as they're here. Please bear with us. Thank you.
Da dinajik senro na. Sangma ya samri jesh dele shubuye. Da dinajik osri le trozo kome siji jengi sokang chemo di na. Osri le nishu rangri pimi yone. Osri le shuondang mimang la kajin jijin ki tuji chishu lingu be ben zekor. Chibju jangbe. Chibju kajin jangbe. Gunjun zo ken wai cho zhe. Gure trozo tumi nambatang. Ui pimi jikzu ki benten si jong, bonran ba lo san seng ke chok ke zhe, pimi kundu nang ba, xian yang, yun ring ne pe ten to, tu nang tang jab jo nang ken ki kundu yong la tu zi che shu ging, ti ring zhe gue, zho mik sa di chi kundu nang ba yin ba son zang, ane ngang zhe zhe gue xiang, xiang ken zhe rim di yin jin nang, ane nang shu ba, xu shu ba shu ging, to chen nang. Sorry, I think somebody's knocking on the door. We have a few people. Tashidele and good evening. Uh, Dr. Lobson Sange, President of the Tibetan Central Administration. <coughs> Mr. My Honorable Michael Danby, Co-Chair of the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet. Honorable Warren Ench, MP, co-chair of the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet. I'll just start from this. <laughs> Senator Darren Hinge, uh, Honorable Kevin Andrews, Honorable Senator Lisa Singh, uh, Senator Gr uh, Sterling Griffiths. I hope I've got everybody. Um, so good evening and welcome. Uh, 
I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land we are meeting on, the Nanawal people. I acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution they make to the life of the city and this region. Oh, welcome. We now have the Honorable Ken White, MP. Please. So, uh, my name is Sering Dickey, and I'm one of the fortunate Tibetans to call Australia home. I have many reasons to be thankful to Australia for. I started my professional career in Australia. I watched my children grow up and go to university in Australia. I have been truly welcomed in Australia. And now, on behalf of the Tibet Information Office and the Tibetan communities in Australia, it is my pleasure to welcome you all here. I hope that you are all as excited as I am to be part of this important Thank You Australia ceremony. And just a little background. As you may be aware, this year, Tibetans around the world are observing 2018 with events to express gratitude to the governments and people of the world who have given shelter and support to the Tibetan people. It is almost 50 years since the first Tibetan refugees called Australia home. Since then, many Tibetans have rebuilt their lives in Australia and have become contributing members of the big Australian family. So today, we express our gratitude to the, uh, to the government and people of Australia for being on this journey with us. And now, I would like to invite the Honorable Michael Danby, MP, to say a few words. Please welcome Mr. Danby. It's uh, very moving to uh, hear those words of gratitude from the Tibetan community. First of all, can I welcome our honoured guest, uh, the Sikyong, the uh, Tibetan Prime Minister in exile. It's a um, great honour to have you here because everybody welcome him. Um, parliamentary colleagues, but particularly I want to... Uh, uh, pay tribute to uh, the Honourable Ken Wyatt, my, my dear friend, the Minister, who has the uh, courage to represent Australia here today. We're very grateful, Ken, that you're here. Um, and uh, uh, Warren uh, and all of my parliamentary colleagues will have a chance to say something to you in a, in a few minutes. Um, the Tibetan uh, Parliament in exile, um, the Tibetan Government in exile, uh, is an outcome uh, our dear Tibetan friends know this. Oh, by the way, I should welcome the former Speaker of the, of the Parliament, Peter Slipper. Uh, his presence is a, uh, a symptom or an outcome of His Holiness the Dalai Lama's wisdom. I don't have to tell our Tibetan friends about His Holiness's wisdom, but the de decision to um, split um, the religious and the spiritual leadership of the Tibetan people from uh, the political struggle uh, has meant that His Holiness has given many of the uh, political uh, powers to uh, representatives like uh, uh, the Sikyong, the Prime Minister, and our Tibetan representative in Australia, Kinzom, who's elected to uh, uh, the Tibetan Parliament in exile. It's wonderful that um, Australia has been able to be host to so many of our great uh, Tibetan community. Um, this is a, a country of, uh, of refugees and immigrants, and um, uh, we're so proud of the fact that you're able to maintain your culture uh, and practice your uh, religion uh, here um, under the big arms of Australia where um, you're not persecuted or oppressed uh, as uh, you are back at home. In Tibet, in Hassa, you cannot display a picture of His Holiness the Dalai Lama without being arrested. Um, that is a terrible thing. It's difficult for Australians to imagine it, but that's what, uh, that's what happens there. Um, I don't want to take up uh, much of your time because I know um, so many of you have made a, a big effort to be here. Um, it's, a, it's, it's great uh, that uh, the Sikyong is here. He is uh, a symbol of, the f of Tibetan continuity. Uh, a professor of law at Harvard Uni University who gave up everything 
in uh, uh, a very promising academic life to assume the leadership of uh, the Tibetan people in exile. And uh, for those who imagine uh, or who thought uh, that by um, stealing the Panchen Lama or doing all of the terrible things that are being done to the to the people in Tibet to suppress their religion and culture, which are maintained or emphasised under the Chinese constitution. Um, uh, he's living proof that the Tibetan people, uh, and you are being here today, uh, that, that people will not give up. His Holiness's message is a very moderate one for Tibetan autonomy, uh, 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 the third way, uh, as uh, promised uh, to... Uh, the Tibetan people and minorities under the Chinese constitution to religion, to language, etc. All of that is not practised in reality, but it's promised under uh, the, the Chinese uh, constitution. So um, the Tibetan people are struggling and the Sikyong, Sikyong, who did such a wonderful job when he was here last time at the National Press Club, his presence here is proof of the fact uh, that uh, the Tibetan struggle for identity continues. You continue the Dalai Lama's work, um, both the people here in the Tibetan community and uh, your very welcome presence here, Sikyong. Can we all welcome him and thank all of our presence? I, I can't emphasise to you how grateful I am for Ken Wyatt being here too, who's a man of conviction and who would uh, uh, wants to make it clear that Australia welcomes um, the uh, Tibetan representatives and the Tibetan people. Thank you, Ken, again. We now welcome the President of the Central Tibetan Administration, Dr. Lobson Sangye, to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much, Michael Denby, for your kind introduction and uh, honorable members of the parliament, especially Honorable Minister Ken White for being here because we want to say thank you to the government and people of Australia and it's a privilege to have a representative from the government to receive the uh, thank you souvenir that we want to hand over in a few minutes. Uh, Sixty years ago, uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama had to flee uh, Lhasa, the capital city of Tibet, and after 14 days of trek, uh, he arrived in India. Now it's been 60 years of occupation of Tibet, 60 years of repression of the Tibetan people, 60 years of environmental destruction, 60 years of uh, cultural assimilation and cultural genocide. Still, after 60 years, we are here standing today because of the support, because of the friendship uh, that, that was extended to us by people and the government of Australia. So I want to profoundly extend my deep gratitude to the government and people of Australia. I think uh, the first Tibetan person to come to Australia was 1971. And the first Buddhist center which was established, now it has spread around the world, was 1976, and I think the uh, first Prime Minister to welcome His Holiness Dalai Lama was Paul Keating in 1992, and John Howard uh, met him twice. And I think there are around 1,200 statements made in the Senate, and 1,000 statement, st statements on Tibet made in the House. So Australia has set a good record for other countries to uh, follow. Uh, after 60 years, we are very proud to say that uh, not just Tibetans have survived, but have through resilience and revival is going on. Our culture and civilization has been revived in exile, has spread around the world and back in Tibet. Our democracy is thriving, uh, as Michael just mentioned. Uh, I, my position is elected by Tibetans around the world, and we have a very rigorous, transparent, more vocal perhaps, but in a polite way, a parliamentary session in Dharamsala uh, as well. And uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama has traveled around the world and he has been an advocate of nonviolence and peace and compassion. And he has been one of the tallest uh, giant as far as moral uh, leadership is concerned. And he 
Uh, he was in Australia a few years ago, and he remembers Australia very fondly. And just a few days ago, coming, before coming here, I mentioned that I was going to Australia, and he extended his love and uh, compassion to all of you and his prayers for Australia as well. Maybe we have a lot of politicians here for your next year's election as well, maybe. <laughs> he's, he's not biased, so who, who, whoever wins, he's all right. And uh, now Australia has been a host to you know, around 2,300 Tibetans, and of which 1,363 are former political, political prisoners. Yes. And one, it's sure. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I'm quite used to it, yes. <laughs> so uh, of the 2,300 Tibetans who are in Australia, 1,363 are former political prisoners, and what they did was they suffered, uh, they fought, they participated in political events in Tibet, and because of which many of them were arrested, put behind bars, and many suffered torture as well. But it's only Australia which provided them a special you know, uh, right to immigrate, many of them here in Australia. So on behalf of all the former political prisoners, I want to thank the government of Australia as well. And uh, I will not take much of time, but end with by saying that, uh, uh, now I'm often asked this question, uh, China is becoming more powerful uh, and you don't have to go far, just come to Canberra, you will know the presence of Chinese government in, inside the government and outside the government, and we'll discuss that tomorrow more. But often I'm asked this question, given the rising power of China, what are the chances are there for Tibet? Uh, because you all are you know, good guys, we are nonviolent, uh, we are peaceful, but we do believe justice and peace will ultimately prevail. Same thing was said about Soviet Union. Uh, same thing was said about Berlin Wall, but it did come down. Uh, in fact, when I met a former president of uh, Poland, Leo Wallace, uh, he told me that uh, foreign minister of West Germany and chancellor was meeting him, and then foreign minister asked him, what do you think of all the students and youth surrounding the Berlin Wall? And Leo Wallace told them, it's coming down. Then foreign minister of West Germany said, I would like to see that kind of a problem but it's not going to happen in my lifetime. Within a few weeks' time, Berlin Wall came down. So I, I do remember uh, reading obituaries about Nelson Mandela. And uh, I went to South Africa just this year and went to Robben Island, uh, where he spent you know, eight years in solitary confinement and altogether 27 years in prison. So obituaries were written about Nelson Mandela. You know. They wrote that, forget about reviving or restoring democracy in South Africa, he can't free himself from the prison. But he did, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize, democracy was restored in South Africa. Similarly, we know about East Timor. Uh, similarly, we know about Aung San Suu Kyi. Similar obituaries were written about Northern Ireland. But finally, Good Friday Agreement was signed, and peace has prevailed in Northern Ireland. So these are some of the stories of nonviolent peaceful protests prevailing over very powerful countries and powerful government. And we do believe that our own leader, beloved His Holiness, the great 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet, will return to, to Tibet one day soon. That is the wish of 153 Tibetans who committed self immolation who burned themselves, who categorically and consistently discouraged self immolation but there were two self immolations this year, one just a month or so ago. This is the aspiration. This is the dream. They want to see His Holiness Dalai Lama return to Tibet. And let us all march a little further together because we have many friends, some with gray hair. But nonetheless, <laughs> your gray hair reflects your wisdom. So what we need is your strength and wisdom to march together a little forward so that one day soon we will get there in Lhasa, the capital city of Tibet, with His Holiness Dalai Lama and all those Tibetans who are in exile to be with six million Tibetans inside Tibet. That, that is our dream, but this dream will come true too. Thank you very much.
thank you, Dr. Lobson Sanke. Now I would like the Honorable Warren Inch to say a few words. Look, I, I first of all actually would like to acknowledge our traditional owners, and I, I say that uh, uh, in, and pay respects to our elders. Uh, uh, past and present and emerging, and I say that deliberately because we've got our, uh, in acknowledging Ken White, uh, our first Indigenous uh, uh, member of the House of Representatives and our first Indigenous minister in a government. I think it's very, very appropriate that uh, you should be receiving uh, a thank you gift from the Tibetan pe people. And I, you know, I think that's quite a quite a significant event as a, as one of our first Australians, our first, and, and all these firsts, standing here to receive something like this and having the courage to uh, to actually act out what what he believes in. And I, and I thank you for that, Ken. I sincerely do. And uh, to Sikyong, very inspirational, and it's great to to hear you speaking, and it's great to catch up with you again. I do have to say, however that it's not just the wisdom, I hope, in the, uh, in the grey hair, but some of us with no hair, I'm hoping, <laughs> have a little bit of that wisdom as well. <laughs> um, but you talk about, you, you, talk about, you know, peace, peace, peaceful actions, and, and you're so right in, in, in the way, and, uh, and non-violence. Um, and, 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 of course, aspiring and hoping and, and expecting eventually to get the outcome that we're all here um, supporting. But I think there's another element too with the Tibetan people that I think uh, also needs to be acknowledged and that's resilience and a determination to continue to be who they are and to make sure that the language and the religion and uh, all that cultural identity that is so important to so many, uh, to all Tibetans really, uh, is not only maintained but it is re retained. For, for future generations, and it's not, it hasn't been an easy road, and unfortunately, I think, uh, in many of the, most of these journeys of this nature, of those that you mentioned, none of them were easy, and I'm sure there were many times where people felt that they had to give up, that it was no chance of, 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 ever, of ever achieving an outcome. But of course, I think the Berlin Wall is a very, very good example that uh, impossible things do happen if we can get enough people to believe. And um, you have a lot of friends here in this parliament. Uh, the nature of the place means to say that they come and go. Um, but I think it's fair to say that we have a, uh, a, a it's, it is right across the parties and across all the political sides here and then we do all share that common view here and that common support. Uh, I was pleased to see that uh, Michael acknowledged former spe Speaker Peter Slipper because I know that Peter for the time, and he was in the Parliament for an extended period of time, uh, also a good friend of His Holiness and uh, was very committed to the cause. And uh, I, I think that we have an obligation for those of us that are here to continue to, uh, to be able to advocate and to speak out. It's, and, and, and can I say, we all share the frustrations. We also feel, feel the pressures and, and the pushback, if you like. But I think it's important that we continue to work together and walk this journey together. And um, I think today, in, in, in uh, pre presenting this beautiful, beautiful piece here to a very, very special uh, member of this parliament, I think is another very strong message that uh, we are with you, we will continue to support you, and we certainly look forward to a, a, a very, very uh, a successful outcome. Let's hope for, hope for it is in our lifetime. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you so much, Honourable Warren Inch. I forgot to mention earlier when I was introducing him that he is the co-chair of the Pal of the Australian all-party parliamentary group for Tibet. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to call on the Honourable Ken Wyatt MP to say a few words. Please welcome uh, Minister, the Minister.
Can I also acknowledge my elders, those from the past and those who are still present with us? When I first came to Parliament, I met with a delegation from the Tibetan community. And we talked about the parallels between Indigenous Australians and the Tibetan community in terms of the changes that are made to people's lives. And that those changes impact because country means so much to both sides of us. But I always wanted to be in all events because when you make a friendship, you make a commitment to honour the relationship that you have regardless of circumstances. That the conversations are important. The teaching of each other about the history of our nations brings us together in a way that is very unique and different. And when Warren Ench asked me, along with Michael Danby, to become a friend of the Tibetan community in the Parliamentary Friends Group, I had no hesitation because of my first meeting. And I've attended many events, both here and in uh, the birthday celebrations in Sydney at the Town Hall for the Dalai Lama. And having had the privilege of meeting the Dalai Lama here in this uh, room, uh, it was a great experience because it showed the strength of the faith that we have within ourselves, but also the culture that is the essence of who we are as unique individuals, because it is what we have that comes from the raising of us as children by our parents and by those who are wise within our communities that make us who we are. How we see the world is often shaped through the history and understanding that we have of our communities. But what's more important is the resilience that we develop as we continue in our journeys of life and aspiration. And today is special because Australia has always welcomed Tibetan people who contribute to our community. You bring with you your culture, your history, but also art and the foods that you share. And you've become part of our family as a community that lives together and celebrates the individuality that we all have. And I want to acknowledge that. And having you here today is also tremendous to see you again. I stood with you outside on the lawns between the Senate and the House of Representatives where we were interviewed about the parallels of our history. And First Nations people of this country have always been welcoming. We, in all eras of our development of 65,000 years plus, have always interacted with other nations. Historically, it wasn't the British that we first interacted with. It was people from the Asian regions and the Chinese. And so trade did exist. So as a nation of First Nations people, our relationship with so many others has been strong and evident over centuries. But my friendship with you is based on the people who've had significant influence in the stories that we've shared with each other. And I look at a couple now standing in front of me. And I do want to acknowledge you as well, Peter Slipper, because you were part of the journey that we took in the friendships we built with the Tibetan community. So it's a great privilege to stand here today with you. And I thank you for the honour of sharing some time with you. And to my parliamentary colleagues, I want to acknowledge your commitment, because it is important that we also demonstrate that we will walk with and be immersed in a community that has given us so much. So I want to acknowledge all of you. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honourable Ken Wyatt. We will now do the presentation of the Thank You Australia Memento. I would like to invite the President, Dr. Lopsasinghe, and Honourable Ken White, if you could please come here.
And also, maybe can I please um, ask all the members and senators also to come forward? Hadalato doing the peronang. Um, the people singing the song, please come forward. We now have a very special song composed for this very ceremony called Thank You Australia. This song was commissioned by the Tibet Information Office. The lyrics were composed by former representative and former Tibetan minister Gungo Jope Peljo Srinla. Uh, music by Mr. Nigel Griffiths and Mr. Tenzin Hada Rinpa Pyeongchang and will be performed by members of the ACT Tibetan community. Um, not to give away the whole idea of the song, but just, just so that you can appreciate it, the, you will, of course, have, I think, um, uh, some, the, the pamphlet which has the lyrics and the meaning, but this song expresses the love and gratitude for Australia. The song begins by acknowledging the original custodians of the land, indigenous Australians, and their continuing connections to the land and waters. Uh, I won't give much away now, but uh, please enjoy the song. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I hope this song has touched your hearts. It certainly has touched mine with these beautiful, meaningful words. And now I would like to. I would like, like to welcome uh, Senator Richard Di Natale here as well. Good evening, Senator. Uh, but first, also, I would like to now welcome um, Senator Darren Hinch to say a few words. Please welcome Senator Darren Hinch. Thank you, and thank you all. And Mr. President, may I say to you, thank you. Good to see you again, and thank you for your welcome when we were in Dharamsala last, uh, last year. Um, I want to share with you an experiment tonight. And the experiment is this. I've been in touch with the Department of Foreign Affairs because I noticed that Chinese politicians come to Australia on visas, and they're allowed to go anywhere they like in Australia. So I'm in touch with the Department of Foreign Affairs, and I'm applying for a visa to go to China next year, and I'm going to apply for a visa to go to China. The place I want to visit in, uh, in China is called Tibet, because they come here and they go anywhere, so I can't see why I can't go there and go anywhere. Number two, on a serious note, as we discussed earlier tonight, you are back in the news in a way, a backhanded way, because the Ergar are being treated so abominably in China. As you say, by the same man who persecuted you all those years ago, he's using the same tactics against the Ergar in China as we speak. And he got promoted to the Politburo because of his behaviour in Tibet. And today, sadly, uh, Senator Dinatani, Leader of the Greens, tried to get a motion up to condemn this, and unfortunately he was blocked by the government who would not listen to it. I'm glad they treat Tibetans better than they're treating the Urgas. And finally, I want to tell you one thing. I want to tell you about something, because as you know, scarves play such a large part in, in Tibetan culture. I want to tell you a, a scarf story involving the Dalai Lama, whom I was privileged to meet again last year, and I've met him four times. When he first came to Australia, I think it was 1992, first visit here, he was going to do one interview, with, and I'm a former journalist, he was going to do one interview only in Australia with a television journalist. And they said, obviously, you'll want George Negus or Ray Martin or Richard Carlton. And he said, that little high-pitched, giggly voice of his, he said, no, no, I want the bearded one. <laughs> and they said, no, you don't. <laughs> but he did, and I interviewed him that year, and I've interviewed him several times since. But the... The first time I interviewed him, when it was over, traditionally, his staff gave me a white silk scarf. And it was at the Sydney exhibition, Sydney showgrounds. As I walked out, there's a huge um, Tibetan greet, pe people there. And people came up to me, realised I had the, the scarf, and we wanted to touch it. And, uh, and I said, well, OK, give me your name and address. This is before uh, emails. Give me your name and address, and I'll send you a piece of it. So I took the scarf home and I chopped it up in little pieces, and I sent it to a lot of Buddhists. So I thought, I'm not a Buddhist, they will appreciate it more than I do. Uh, I've interviewed him a couple of times later. The next time I interviewed him, he, uh, uh, he it was in Melbourne, I think it was. Anyway, he, um, at the end of the interview, the Dalai Lama took the scarf of his own neck and draped it around mine, and he waved his finger at me and he said, don't cut this one up. So that's my recollection. Anyway, look, we are working for you. We try as hard as we can. And I thank you, Mr. President. It's an honour to have you here. Thank you, Senator Darren Hinch. And I hope you do get to go to Tibet and do tell us about it when you come back. Um, and now I would like to uh, welcome um, 
sorry, Honorable Kevin Andrews to say a few words. Please welcome. Sorry, Honorable Kevin Andrews, sorry. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. My parliamentary colleagues, including uh, Minister Ken Wyatt, uh, former Speaker Slipper, uh, members of the Tibetan community here in Australia, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour to be here with you again in this Parliament House. Mr President, the last time we met, uh, both you and the Dalai Lama, as Senator Hinch pointed out, was in New Delhi about uh, a year ago as part of our visit to uh, that country in Dharmasala and to visit with the Central Tibetan Administration. So it's great to have you back here, uh, Mr President. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes it's said that we are against the people of China and for the people of Tibet. But I say we are against injustice and repression and for human dignity and human liberty. As the citizens of a country which, by any measure, is probably one of the most free in the world, a country to which millions of others have come, have emigrated here because of those freedoms, then surely it's part of our global responsibility to stand up for freedom and against repression wherever that repression occurs in the world. And it's for that reason that I support the people of Tibet, that reason that I support your people, Mr President. May you find that freedom one day so that you can share, as we do in this country, that dignity and freedom which is at the essence of every human heart. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honourable Kevin Andrews. Uh, I would now like to acknowledge, um, um, sorry, George Christensen here. Um, welcome. Uh, and also, I'd like to welcome uh, Senator Richard Di Natale to say a few words now. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Firstly, let me begin, begin by acknowledging uh, Sikyong Dr. Lobsang Sangay, President of the Central Tibetan Administration. It's wonderful to see you again. Uh, let me acknowledge all of my parliamentary colleagues, uh, particularly Senator Janet Rice, uh, my colleague uh, in the Senate, and of course, acknowledge all of you. Uh, we are standing here on Aboriginal land. I want to pay respects to the Ngunnawal people, to elders past and present, and reflect on the fact that this evening, while the Chinese government is dispossessing the Tibetan people of their land, um, that is something that we saw our first Australians, our First Nations people in you. And I understand you had Ken White give a very heartfelt speech talking about the connection between Australia's First Nations people and the Tibetan people. The Greens have always been very strong supporters of the Tibetan cause. And it's, I have to say, heartwarming to see so many people right across the political divide stand together in solidarity with you. When our former leader, Senator Bob Brown, retired from the Senate, he made a very strong commitment to the Tibetan people. He said he would work for the Tibetan cause until his dying days. And during his time in Parliament, Bob did indeed go to Dharamsala to learn in detail about the Tibetan culture. He learned about the Chinese government's repression of the Tibetan people and he saw firsthand the experience of Tibetan people on the ground. And of course many other Green Senators have followed in his footsteps and I too hope one day to be able to visit Tibet and to bear witness uh, to the suffering of the Tibetan people. Uh, we speak out against the injustices being perpetrated against the Tibetan people because we speak out against injustices committed against people everywhere. Uh, Darren today talked about our motion in the Senate uh, condemning the persecution of the Uyghurs in China right now. And just as we stand in defence of their human rights, we stand in defence of your human rights. You've been deprived of your right to democracy, your right to freedom of speech, your right to religious observance, and of course, your right to liberty and freedom. 
We can stand up and do this here in Australia because we live in a democracy. We can stand up and speak about the Tibetan cause without fear of being imprisoned. We can do that because we live in a country that, despite its faults, acknowledges that all people should be free. We can each practice our own spirituality or religious observance in a way that uh, is, is uh, consistent with our own beliefs. We can do that here in Australia. We can carry around pictures of religious leaders. Indeed, we can carry around a picture of the Dalai Lama if we choose, and we know that uh, we can do so uh, unhindered. Um, the Dalai Lama, let me say, is, having met him, uh, is a man of great compassion and decency, a wonderful person who has taught the world so much and we are honoured that he has been able to grace us with his presence on so many occasions. But, you know, if you're in Tibet right now, you can't do any of those things. You can't practise your spirituality. You can't practise your religion. You can't make documentaries. You can't take photographs in the wrong places. Tibetan monks and nurses are being forced by Chinese authorities to basically act as propagandists for the Chinese government and the Communist Party. And that's why we continue to speak out in support of the Tibetan people. We're protectors of nature in the Greens. We want to see nature protected. But not when plans for massive nature reserves are basically cover to dispossess Tibetan nomads under the guise of, import, of, of protecting unique and important ecosystems. That is the sort of abuse that is going on right now in Tibet. We want to see a free Tibet. We'll work with you and your community to hold the Chinese government to account. Now, we can continue to have a relationship with China, and we should, but that should not stop us from speaking out when we need to speak out. We're going to do everything we can to work to advance uh, your um, reciprocal access in the hope that the Chinese government's going to finally provide unrestricted access to Tibet for Australian officials, for journalists, for politicians, indeed for tourists. We should all have the privilege of being able to do that. So let me finally conclude just by thanking you Thanking you for standing again uh, with us together tonight, all of you, in solidarity. I want to thank your community for what you've brought here to Australia. And please know that you continue to ha have our support. You continue to ha have our support in your fight for what are basic human rights. You continue to have our support in your fight for liberty and, most importantly, in your fight for freedom. We stand with you. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you, Senator Richard Di Natale. Um, I believe the red uh, light is <laughs> going off. Does it mean? Oh, 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 okay. All right. I'm so glad because we've had, you know, the members, everybody rushing off. So it's been a bit of a, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, I'd like to acknowledge, sorry, um, Mr. Jason Falonsky, MP. Welcome. Uh, Senator Janet Rice. Welcome. And uh, I believe uh, Senator, the Honourable Conchetta Ferraventi Wells is at the back somewhere, or has she left now? She just left. Oh, okay, she just left. So, oh, she, okay, all right, okay. And now we've had so many uh, speakers from the Australian Parliament. We now have a Tibetan parliamentarian, Miss Kinzom Dongdu who is the representative for Australasia. Please welcome Kinzom La. Tomate Tuzo Rabadin Nangola, Upimi Digsuke, Bandi Sigon Chola, and he finds Australia gay, Pimi, some is substitute, some di mixing it, some di shuani. Dinanshi, and he finds the Tuzo Rabadin Nala. Troputa, and a Mima Nang Tropo, Sopa Hagi Tropo, and Australia Pimit Samalola, some details tell you. So, dear um, members of parliament uh, and friends of Tibet and members of the Tibetan community, 
first of all, on behalf of our community, uh, I would like to offer a heartfelt thanks to the Australian government and the people of this great nation. Um, I would in particular like to express my respect for Australia's First Nations people uh, and to acknowledge the resilience of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people, uh, to acknowledge the ongoing challenges you face, uh, to recognize our common struggle for uh, self-determination, and um, like you, you know, we remain strong in our deep connections to our culture and to our land, and thank you for welcoming us to, our, to, our, to your country. Uh, so from the high mountains of Tibet to this country, to the Australian shores, to this sunburned country, we have come a long way to seek freedom and dignity. And thanks to the generosity of the government of Australia and the Australian people, we have found here a safe home, a place where we can live in freedom and with, and with dignity. You have welcomed us, offered us many opportunities, and made us part of the Australian family. Living in a free and democratic country, um, we are free to practice our rich culture, and we are free to raise our voices to challenge the ongoing repression of those inside Tibet without any fear of repercussions. And that's a privilege and a responsibility that we do not take lightly. And we will always aspire uh, to repay this generosity by being true to our Tibetan values of compassion and universal responsibility exemplified by our spiritual leader, His Holiness Dalai Lama. And to make this our contribution to the rich multicultural fabric uh, of Australia. And Tonight uh, may not be the uh, occasion to discuss politics or the complexity of Australia's relationship with China for that matter, but allow me to say this. You know, as Tibetans, we know a thing or two about working with China and the growing uh, debate over China's influence in Australia and its quest for global dominance um, strangely is very familiar to us Tibetans. And you'll remember that China's colonization of our homeland seven de decades ago began with a promise of development and the rest is history. So as Australia manages its relationship with China, we urge you to look to our Tibetan experience, uh, hold true to the values that we all share and on which Australia was built and to navigate carefully the waters ahead of us. And to understand China, you do have to understand the Tibet story. And to understand the Tibet story, you do have to hear directly from the Tibetans and not, from, not just from the Chinese government representatives or the China lobbies who regularly walk in and out of this building. And finally, I wish to end um, with a message from a Tibetan elder. Uh, he, I think, is the oldest member of the Sydney Tibetan community. His name is Lopsang Nobu. He's 84, and he was imprisoned for 24 years by the Chinese government for taking part in the 1959 uprising in capital Hassa. And before coming to Canberra here for this occasion, I called him and asked him what message he would like me to convey here to the audience. And he said, please tell our friends that he will never forget the kindness that Australia has shown to him and will always remain grateful you know, for the opportunity he has got to live in this beautiful, peaceful country and that he will always keep Australia in his daily prayers. So on this note of gratitude, I want to say thank you to the chair.
Thank you very much, Kinzobla. Um, I would like to acknowledge former Speaker of the Australian Parliament, Mr. Peter Slipper. I'm sorry I didn't acknowledge you before, but we are so happy that you could join us. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we now have two cultural performances. Uh, the first one is called Sangsum Ginzedi, and it is about the three provinces of Tibet. Please enjoy this wonderful performance. I'm so sorry. I, I need to acknowledge Ms. Sharon Clayton, MP. I'm so sorry. Welcome.
Thank you, girls. Um, I would now like to welcome uh, the former pri uh, pre foreign minister of Australia, uh, Mr. Gareth Evans. Welcome. Thank you. Sorry. So our next performance is a peacock dance from the Ngari region of Tibet. Please enjoy.
uh, thank you, uh, the girls and the two boys, for that wonderful dance. I just I would like to mention that the two boys actually came to Australia very recently, and they've been very brave to take part in the dance because usually boys are not very you know keen on dancing. <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, so we have now come to the end of our program. I'd now like. I'd now like to invite the representative, Mr. Lakpatsoko, to uh, give a vote of thanks. So, uh, before I say a few words, I would like to uh, call uh, Tamara, Tamara and Adam and uh, James, please, could you please come near the podium, please? So uh, these three gentlemen, they have been so helpful at last minute. They have, they have really spent so much of time working for this. And without their help, uh, it wouldn't have been, uh, I mean, uh, taken place. So I would like to really deeply thank them very much. Thank you. And Tamara and uh, Adam is the uh, secretary of uh, Warring Eng, Honorable Warring Eng, and James is the secretary of Honorable Michael Danby. Thank you. Thank you. Then I would like to, I mean, thank the co-chairs of the all Australian All-Party Parliament Group for Tibet, Honorable Michael Danby and uh, Honorable uh, Warren Inch and their staff, I mean, uh, which I have already mentioned. The other honorable members and senators uh, and who joined us today, it means a lot to us. Thank you so much for your presence today and the wonderful words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kumo Jobela and uh, uh, Adala and Nigel for composing a wonderful song and the lyrics and taking all the, uh, the responsibility till the uh, completion of a song. Thank you so much. I would also like to thank the various Tibetan communities of Australia who had supported this ceremony, especially the members of ACT Tibetan community who have volunteered and helped us in many different ways. Thank you so much. <laughs> then the community singers and dancers for their wonderful performances. <laughs> I would like to thank our president, Dr. Lobsang Senke, for presiding over today's ceremony. It made the ceremony extra special. Thank you. <laughs> then I would also like to thank the adv advisory uh, committee members and my colleague, Tashi Takcho and Kelsan Gyanzela. They have worked so hard. <laughs> and finally, thank you all our guests and today, who, uh, you all, I mean, who have supported us and befriended us for many years. And I hope you will continue to lend your support to the Tibetan cause, and we always remain grateful to you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> and lastly, I would like to acknowledge the Reverend Bill Cruz, who, who is always present at the Tibetan function, wherever it may be, Naura, Sydney, uh, Canberra, Reverend Bill Cruz has been one of the, uh, the very close friend of His Holiness Dalai Lama, and thank you so much for your presence today. <laughs> and lastly, the, our, our former uh, 
parliamentarian uh, Peter Sleeper, who who has visited Dharamsala as a the uh, parliament uh, Australian parliamentarian. I think he's the first parliamentarian who visited Dharamsala, and uh, you have uh, supported us for many years. So I would like to give you a special thanks to you. Thank you so much. And lastly, the uh, Australian Parliament House I have been so kind lending us this venue. And uh, there, I mean, there are so many formalities we had to go through. Eventually, everything worked out very successfully. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, please uh, enjoy uh, if there's any <laughs> food left, and also mingle. And uh, oh, actually, we actually we will have to leave this uh, room by 7:30. So so sorry, it'll be a bit rushed. But thank you very much, and good evening and good night. Thank you.